We'll start, I don't know where we start with you guys. I mean, for those that maybe we start a bit about the company first and then we'll kind of go backwards. So, I mean, Blue Moose Media speaks for itself. But if anybody doesn't know what a Blue Moose does, why don't you explain what your business is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, so we're Blue Moose Media. Uh, we started the company uh, in November of uh, 2016, so we're about a year and a half in. And uh, we provide social media management and uh, social media consulting and training uh, to small to medium-sized businesses. Um, and we've now worked with uh, uh, about 50 businesses over our past year, and um, I guess uh, that's what we do, Driz. We, uh, we take photos, we uh, put them up for uh, companies, uh, we develop them a, a social media strategy, uh, speak on behalf of their voice, but then on the other flip side, on the consulting and uh, training side, we teach them how we do uh, the social media management and uh, how we would do it if we were them. Sweet. So where'd the name come from? Blue Moose. Uh, name in the company. Name in the company, we want something to stand out. We're in a crowd here at LB Distillers, and we told you the name. Uh, any other name that we come up with um, just didn't seem like it rang true. Uh, for example, one of the ideas, we had 86 Social. Nothing creative about it. We're both born in 86. But that's not something that you would stick in your head. Uh, blue Moose, something visual. Uh, blue is very trusted in marketing. Blue and green are great colors. So another reason why we chose that. And Moose is very Canadian. And uh, we love Western Canada. It's where we do all of our adventuring. So it really rang true to our business and who we are. So, how did you guys meet? <laughs> uh, we were in commerce together, and uh, we became uh, gym pals, actually. Um, and we ended up uh, going into the co-op program at the same time. That's when we became really tight. Uh, we both were applying for jobs in uh, Saskatoon here, and um, Ricky took a job with Rolco Radio, and I took a job with Uyghurs Financial, where you hired me, and you already alluded to that, I guess. Um, and throughout that whole program, we were obviously just going through different stage or the same kind of stage in our uh, in our careers, in our uh, uh, education, and uh, just grew tighter that way, and just never, I guess, we never drifted apart. So. So what, what was your focus then when you were with Relco? Like, what, what were you doing? And did it, did it build to what you were doing now? Yeah, inter interestingly enough, uh, when I started with Relco, I started in sales. And uh, at the time, internet uh, advertising was just taking a real hold. Mm -hmm. And I was the youngest in the office. And so they gave me a laptop and said, hey, figure this out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at the time, it was very tough. Uh, but over, over time, I got it. And then that really led me into storm chasing. And storm chasing came right after that. And we built that business using internet advertising and social media. And it already led to where we are here with Blue Moose Media. Yeah. So y you guys were both kind of doing separate things. What was the moment where you both thought, you know what, we should do something together? And was it, did you know what you should do together? Or was it just you knew you wanted to work together? How, what was that process for you guys? Yeah, like life was in the dumps and I had little to no options. And so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> That's why I'm the host here. Yeah. <laughs> It was a time we both uh, were at a transitional point in life. It was a year and a half ago. Travis just got back from traveling the world for a year. And for myself, my projects had come to an end. And so, yeah, we were out and about and we're talking about what we wanted to do next and talking about how we both love to start a business. And so, yeah, we're brainstorming ideas. And uh, over a few weeks, we figured out the social media uh, really had an opening in the market for that. And uh, yes, yeah, so we gave it a shot. And it, it's been quite the process, but. I can imagine we'll get into that. And uh, I guess in our fourth year, fourth year university, uh, Ricky and I were uh, in, the, in a group uh, in commerce uh, in an entrepreneurship class. And that was the first business plan that we ever built together. And uh, that's when I soon realized that Ricky doesn't quite have the number side of it, but he's highly creative. Um, and so uh, Ricky and I just have very complementing uh, skill sets. And so that's why we just always knew that that would be a good partnership. Uh, we knew, I knew that uh, he could carry the creative part, I could carry the more financial and the business side of it, and that we'd made a, make a great team. And so um, I guess that was kind of the first time that we ever got into it. We had developed a, a business plan on a West 
West Coast tour that we wanted to do in Canada. Um, it was called West Coast West Coast Tours. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. I love that the first business you ever thought of name made total sense. So you obviously have kind of had that creative background, and I don't want to. This will be for Travis actually. Um, you've always done this the sales marketing for Relco, and then you did the storm chasing stuff and built a really big social uh, media following. And Travis, you've had a different background. You were one of the youngest uh, executive directors for a not for profit in the province. Um, how did it turn for you? Like, where did, where did you go, uh, first of all, from the financial world to then a not-for-profit, then social media? How, how, how did you make those jumps? Yeah, this will be a, a bit of a long story, but... Um, all right, maybe I'll change the question. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Uh, so I guess, well, first of all, you hired me in the financial uh, industry and, and uh, when I was a third year university student in the co-op program at the Edwards School of Business. Um, I came out, uh, or I went through that experience thinking that I wanted to be a financial advisor and I was dead set on that. So I got all my uh, securities, I got my insurance license, I was working at Uyghurs Financial and as soon as I got into it, I just, uh, it might have just been a life stage I was at, I just knew it wasn't for me. And so, uh, you know, I, I handed them my resignation there and then uh, I had done quite a bit of volunteering with Ken Shevel Day Off and, and the SAS party, so um, kind of moved over. Uh, Chevy gave me an opportunity in his uh, constituency office, and so I worked for him for eight months, and I, I feel bad about this, but, but I ended up giving him a, my resignation and uh, because I had got a, a job at Great West Life. So I got back into the sort of financial uh, industry, uh, working as an uh, insurance um, uh, consultant to different financial advisors in the city. I uh, did that for a year, but then that's when my, my dream job appeared and, and kind of just surface uh, and I was the executive director for the Parkinson Society Saskatchewan um, I had started um, uh, the Lowe's Emotion Parkinson fundraiser uh, I guess we're going into our 10th year this year and uh, uh, so that was my real passion was, was Parkinson's disease and the board chair at the time had approached me at another event and said you know I'd like to put you I would like you to put your name in for that that position I said listen I'm 25 years old like I don't I don't know what it takes to be an executive director and he said Said, well, you know, your heart's in the right place. You, you're very passionate about this cause. You have a business background from school. I would like you to put your name in. And I can still remember in the interview, they asked me what board governance meant. And I thought he was talking about government and uh, didn't even know what governance meant. And uh, that was how junior and green I was. But um, yeah, so I, I did that for four years and got involved in a number of different community com committees across Canada uh, for Parkinson's. And uh, um, I guess uh, when I finished off that after four years, I went traveling for a year and uh, came home. And that's when Ricky and I had met up and, and Blue Moose Media was born. So Ricky, now with your story a little bit, you built a brand that then ended up being storm chasing, uh, ended up getting TV show. How did that happen? Because that doesn't just happen overnight. Like, you, did you start thinking I want to do storm chasing or was it you were just building a social media brand and then some opportunities came? Like, walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So what uh, happened was at the time I was working in the mines up in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, after university, I realized I really wanted to pursue my passion for adventure in the outdoors. And my whole family works in the mining sector and they get to work shift work, two weeks in, two weeks out, that kind of stuff. So I started pursuing the mines so I could have two weeks off every month and go and pursue what I really love to do. Uh, a few bounces later, I met some guys that were storm chasers. I had no idea you could storm chase. Uh, of course, I've seen Twister like most of us, but I went on for my, for my first storm chase, saw my first tornado, and I fell in love. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's still one of my favorite things to do. And so I started going after every storm chase I could, could with these guys. I ended up quitting my job at the mine and wanted to put everything in for this. But I quickly learned that if we didn't figure out a way to make money, we weren't going <laughs> to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're trying to sell pictures and videos to news networks. And I was doing okay, but that was barely paying the bills for gas and hotels. So uh, that's when we started looking at social media. Even five, six years ago, social media as a business was still very new. Uh, but we figured that if we could build a big enough following, get enough eyeballs on us, that we could monetize that and hopefully get sponsorships and maybe possibly work towards a TV show. And so it's three years of building that business on social media that we eventually, uh, between the three of us, got over a million followers. And we had a few really good luck uh, chases with catching some really big tornadoes, got some eyeballs on us, and then a production company came looking for us through that social media, and that's how we got our TV show. Yeah, that's interesting. The, 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 the common story with a lot of entrepreneurs is not that they like start where they're like experts. 
the common theme is that, like you both kind of said, I was green. I don't even know how I did it. But it's this inner belief in themselves that you can do it or that you're going to do it. Do you feel like that's paid, been part of your process? Like you've just always believed in yourself? You've had a passion and you just knew you could figure it out? You know, there's a, there's a quote uh, that really rings true with me. Oh my God, everybody. Ricky has a quote. <laughs> <laughs> and it sums up, you say, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be delusional. You have to believe sure. that your reality is some, something different than it actually is. And uh, even to this day, it still feels that way. You always have to believe it's going to be better. There is light at the end of the tunnel because sometimes it doesn't feel like that. And uh, yeah, so everything cool. along the way has been a lot of trial and error and research and comparing our results to somebody else's and learning along the way. Uh, but it's a lot of fun because yeah. it always seems to work out. Yeah, that's awesome. So Blue Moose is just over a year old now. So a year and a half in, you guys have definitely had some struggles. You've definitely had a lot of work. It's not like you just say, hey, Blue Moose, let's go. I know you guys have been working hard in the background developing. I know Travis won't do anything unless he's got <laughs> one to 3,000 lined up perfectly. Uh, what have been some of the biggest struggles in your first year of business? Was it, I know that it didn't just start with you two, there was another person involved. That's never easy when there's partnerships and then changing those partnerships. How has that journey been for you guys? Has it been easy? What have the struggles been? Yeah, no, and, and that's exactly it. Uh, you know, when we came into it, it was funny. Like, I, I have a lot of entrepreneurial friends, and, uh, you know, they've always told me how difficult it is, but you don't really truly know what they're talking about until you get into it yourself. And uh, Ricky and I were pretty, like, ignorant to the fact that we didn't think that was going to happen to us. We, we were like, oh, you know, like, Ricky's got a social media following. Travis, you got good business background. Like, the business is going to come in, Whoa. and it was just going to be, you know, this magical thing that just happens and um, we were so wrong uh, it's been challenging it's it's been a lot of fun obviously we're constantly learning um, but probably the biggest challenge uh, was that you know last summer it, it has to be one of the lowest points that both of us were at um, we had had started to figure out that we wanted to go down a path um, but we weren't able to pay ourselves anything. Uh, we were spending every waking hour in the office, uh, week, weeknights, weekdays, weekends, uh, all waking hours we were in the office. It was so beautiful last summer. Uh, we missed out on all of that in an air-conditioned office. Uh, that's not fun. Um, but uh, probably that, uh, you know, having no money, not being able to do anything with your friends. When they ask you to do something, you really can't. Unless you have a good friend like Evan who takes you out golfing and takes you out for lunch and takes you out to every event. I'm very fortunate and grateful. Um, and I'm not saying that just on TV. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that would be my biggest challenge was that, um, yeah, financial and time uh, wasn't there. Uh, I think our biggest struggle and still is today is where are we going? What, where can our business go? And uh, even off the bat, we started off just handling accounts. Uh, but we quickly realized that the market for us was going to be in the training side, more or less. And so we really started to venture into that and how to set up, how to set up coursework and all of that uh, was a real struggle. Uh, so it was more of a, we really struggled working on the business versus working in the business. Uh, but it's coming around. So where do you, like, and you, you kind of just hit on it, Ricky, like where you guys started isn't where you're at today. Like you've had to do some jukes and some moves, right? And you found some niches that really worked really well. And then that dried up and then you had to make another shift. So walk us through what that's like, where you think you have a plan and then you have to take a left because that's not working. And where do you see that going in the future? Do you feel like the business plan you have right now is solid and going to be the rest of the career or do you expect it to keep morphing and changing? Uh, well, so in our, in our business, there's the account management and there's the training side of it. Um, social media, uh, we feel very strongly is here to stay. Now, granted, it's going to keep on morphing. It's morphing nearly every week. Uh, but as long as you can stay on top of it, uh, there definitely is, will always be a market for it. But that said, we're also working within a marketing company. So if we ever have any other entrepreneurial ideas that we would like to do, we have a background to launch us into that as well. So we do have some other ideas we would love to pursue in the future. So keeping those in the back pocket as well. 
And in terms of where we're at today, um, you know, we, we have had uh, some staff. Uh, we have our, our student, who is our summer student uh, last uh, last summer, Nana, um, with us here today. Uh, we've had a couple of their contract workers that have helped us out as well, but we've never really had that full-time, long-term employee. I'm in the process right now. We're really excited about. It's like the entrepreneurial dream uh, of being able to hire your first full-time uh, employee, and, and we're right in the middle of that right now. And so, you know, who knows what's going to happen from this point? Um, and, you know, it's going to be really fun to develop the systems for that employee to work within and to, to lead that employee uh, and to help them, to help them grow. Um, we're really excited about it. Uh, we're actually just getting into an office space, into a new office space. So, uh, like I said, we do feel like we're living that entrepreneurial dream and it's really exciting and fun. And uh, who knows what will happen? Obviously, we went down, you know, when we first created the business plan, it was that social media management point. You know, then we went into the training side combination with the management. Who knows what that next thing might be and it might just be another business that uh, we launch up that uh, takes off who knows um, we'll just have to wait and see teal moose huh? <laughs> teal it's a color Travis teal San Jose sharks teal moose what's your, your next business just keep changing the color. It's going to be incredible. You can go bankrupt like a hundred times and just change the color. Oh, teal moose. I didn't. Teal hear, moose. I didn't understand you. So, <laughs> teal moose. Teal moose. I forget where I was going to go. That was a terrible that. joke, by the way. Yeah, yeah. People laugh low. Anyway, they're laughing at you. Yeah, that's fair. I'll take any laughs I can get. <laughs> take any laughs I can get. At least I dressed up for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Travis has got a t-shirt on, too. Come on, man. What are you, Tom Cruise in 1994? <laughs> t-shirt with a blazer. That's dressed up. Okay, Top Gun. Uh, so you guys, I mean, a few months ago, we interviewed a great company, Rock and Bloom, and they specialize on websites. Uh, and you guys have specialized on social media. And I'm sure you heard, like, well, can you do this for me? Because there, there's a lot of things that tie to marketing social media, right? Why did you, I, you guys have specialized just in social media, is that correct? For the most part, uh, we've we've dabbled in Google AdWords as well. Um, uh, so I guess the the organic side of social media, the paid ad strategy of social media, and then Google AdWords is another component, uh, which is uh, not related to uh, social media, but sort of interconnected. Could you tell I just fell asleep when you were saying all that boring stuff? Uh, so if you're if you're if you're focused on social media stuff, how has that worked from a business perspective? Do you like why did you say you know what this is all we're doing when there's lots of opportunity to then because you build the relationships with your customers, you do a great job at it, and they'll come to you like why can't you do this? Why have you guys said you know what this is all we're gonna do? Yeah, it's a really, really good question. Uh, we, we would be capable, and we are capable of doing of doing websites or doing graphic design, things that are tangents of what we do with social media. But that said, we want to be known for being one of the best at social media. And we really want to be experts in this industry. So if we are to do websites to do graphic design, that's going to be taking time away from doing more research and honing our skills on social media. So for that exact reason is why we keep going down that single path. Because uh, there's lots, it's kind of the idea versus going a mile wide and an inch deep is going an inch wide and a mile deep. Yeah, that's fair. It, but has it been a little hard, it, especially when you, you reflect going like, there was times where we weren't paying ourselves and you had some carrots saying like, why don't you do this graphic design for us? Why don't you do this website? How was it to stay true to the character and the vision that you had when you knew that there was opportunity for other income? How did you guys juggle that? Was it just like, we need to stay focused or was it? Yeah, you know, I'd be, I'd be lying to tell you if we didn't take that carrot, <laughs> uh, but we didn't advertise it. Yeah, okay. uh, if you ever went on our website, you saw our social media, all we told you is that we do social media, but if a client did come to us, especially at the beginning when we were struggling and they had a website that needed done as well, we're like, okay, well, this time we'll do it. Yeah. Uh, but we, as time went on, we, now we strictly focus on social media. So as young entrepreneurs in, in the province and in the city, what has been a some of the biggest hurdles that you guys have perceived being your age and being in such a specific uh, genre? And then what has been some of the biggest uh, open doors because of your age? Like is it geez, government or what do you guys felt? So A, what, what was the what's the biggest hurdle being young guys in this new world 
being brand new business? And then what have been some of the easiest parts about being young guys with an open door in a new business? Uh, well, first off, being a new company, it's tough for somebody who's doing business with you versus when you compare to the competition, somebody who might be around for three or five years, whatever that may be. Uh, but for our age-wise, in this industry, it works awesome. And in fact, uh, we're almost at the older end of the spectrum when it comes to social media because people expect a 19-year-old wearing ripped jeans to walk into the office. That's who's going to teach you social media. I don't have my ripped jeans on I today. Say. I saw you looking. <laughs> This is why I get to wear a plaid to work, because I'm expected to look like this. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So that's been the great thing, actually, is that we, we look the part, and social media is one of the few things where we actually look like we know what we're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, in other markets, you'd expect somebody who's looking a little bit different. So actually being young has been a, an advantage yeah. for social media. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it is a bit daunting com coming into large companies sometimes, you know, the 400 plus uh, employees and they're looking to us as the experts to consult them on how they should market their business on social media and that can be a bit daunting sometimes and all we have to do is have the confidence that, you know, we are the experts and uh, that we are obviously young but uh, we know what we're talking about and, and that's definitely been obviously a challenge, I wouldn't lie if, if it hasn't been a challenge to, to think that way and to, to pick yourself up with the confidence to do that, so. So how do you guys feel about the business environment in the city uh, and what are your guys' future plans? Do you feel like you guys got the roadmap nailed for the next 10 years or is your business a bit more fluid, you'll take it as it comes and do you feel like the environment's prepped and ready for you guys for the next little bit? You know, in terms of the business climate, uh, we haven't had the, we, I, we haven't felt it that much in terms of any kind of uh, a decline in, in, in the economy. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've had quite a few uh, prospects in terms of interest, uh, businesses coming to us uh, from all over the province. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, where they are. We've been to North Battleford, Prince Albert, Swift Current, um, into rural areas, Kindersley, uh, obviously Saskatoon. Um, and I, I, I don't know. Um, I think that we'll just keep on uh, marketing uh, out into the, probably in northern Saskatchewan is kind of where we're focusing on. Um, and we will look to focus into the southern parts of the, the province once we feel like we have capacity to do so. Um, you know, f a while back, about six months ago, we ended up having to turn off kind of our ad strategy uh, because we couldn't keep up capacity-wise. And that was a real challenge uh, in terms of turning away business. Uh, you know, we, we knew we got to a point where we couldn't take any more business in. Uh, and so we had to be very selective about who we were going to work with. And so uh, that's kind of the point that we were at uh, just up until kind of the end of 2017 and in the beginning beginning of 2018 and now we're starting to ramp up again uh, so I guess you expect to see some blue moose stuff coming out on social media here soon um, but uh, yeah well and, and I mean it sounds a little ridiculous to ask a social media company uh, how you guys kind of advertised and what the strategy was to get your brand out there I know what you guys did but you guys didn't do a lot of like door knocking cold calling you guys really focused on social media how did you guys do that and how was the brand built? Was it literally just, okay, we're a social media company, we're gonna start doing social media ads or was it not ads, it was just activity and was it very strategic? Did you guys kind of go with the calendars that you guys develop and plans? Yeah, so I, I, we, we preach this in our training. Um, we use a combination of our organic social media approach as well as a paid ad strategy. Uh, the organic uh, approach, we wanted to tell the full brand story. So we would show ourselves in the community uh, doing these types of activities. We would show ourselves, um, uh, you know, in you know, like a humanizing type of uh, post where we would show just office activity doing ridiculous stuff. Uh, we would provide free tips to uh, businesses on how they can market themselves on social media media um, and, and so that's really what we did and obviously we pitched our service uh, and then we use an ad strategy as well where we were using the paid ad strategy to target certain audiences uh, obviously business owners being uh, that audience that we target um, and so that's uh, really how we did that ad strategy it was a combination of our organic approach just being active on social media uh, but then the ad strategy where we just wanted to build some brand awareness uh, people to know what Blue Moose is and what we do. Ricky, before this, we were kind of talking about brand. <clears throat> and I know, like, going out with you two is ludicrous. Like, everybody knows Travis Lowe, and everybody knows Ricky Forbes, and everybody wants a picture with Ricky Forbes. Weird, no one wants a picture with Travis Lowe, but everyone knows Travis. <laughs> so, 
how do you feel building your brand? So like, cause there's a Ricky Forbes brand that's not Blue Moose, it's a Ricky Forbes brand. How have you felt that that's impacted Blue Moose? I guess that would even be maybe a, like Travis might have some input on that as well because you've built this brand, you've built this, um, obviously people can see that you're legit, you have some success in social media. So was, was that a strategy you had that you're just gonna build a Ricky Forbes brand or was it just kind of natural because you were passionate about it and you were kind of in the tornado uh, stocking business and it just kind of worked out or like how uh, building the brand how, how was that part of your strategy or was it natural yeah that's a good question uh, when we first started tornado hunters we thought we'd all team up we're all gonna go we're all gonna be underneath the tornado hunter account and we'd all put our, our topics of discussion in there put our photos and our videos uh, but we quickly learned that if that doesn't go anywhere, then that account, because you can't change the names afterwards, or at least at that time you couldn't, was only as good as that account was. And so it was no value to us if we wanted to do anything else. And so that's when we started branching into doing speaking, doing things that required an individual brand. So all three of us, myself, Greg, and Chris started making our own platforms. And uh, eventually I was able to leverage that into other categories. So for the venture sector and things like that, uh, that really helped out. And now with Blue Moose, uh, it's a great credibility factor. Uh, and, a lot of, and it's great, I get to stay on top of the game because I'm always trying to be the best at what I'm doing, what we're doing for clients, and this directly translate into our, translates into our training. Uh, like I was saying, there's things changing every week, but I get to stay on top of it because it's of my own personal interest that we're staying on top of the game. Yeah. Saskatchewan, we, we've always talked about it. It's an interesting place because it's so relational. Like people are so connected with each other. They're so willing to help each other. So you have this brand that Ricky's built, but you also have, in my opinion, one of the best relationship builders I've ever met with Travis. So obviously at the beginning, you're going to be connecting with the people you know, the relationships you built. And then there's the people that you don't have those relationships with, which you have this brand that gives you some credibility. Where do you guys see uh, your sales? sales efforts going forward? Is it going to be more at the brand or are you always going to be able leveraging the relationships and how valuable are those relationships versus a brand? We don't do any outbound sales. There's no cold calling. Uh, we're not doing any kind of, uh, you know, mailers. We're using purely an inbound strategy, an inbound marketing strategy. So all the leads come through our website or through social media to us. And so that's really been uh, great. So in terms of where we're at right now, uh, right now, all that we have time for, because it's just Ricky and I working in the, in the business, along with Nana a little bit uh, when she takes a day or whatever, uh, a couple hours a week, um, is that all I can do is phone them. And, and it's tough to build a relationship with just a quick phone call. Yeah. You just can't really build that, that human connection. You don't really get to know who they are because it's a very short conversation. Sure, you can ask a couple questions about who they are, uh, but until you actually get face-to-face, -face, uh, it's really difficult to build that relationship. And that's really what I feel we've missed out on some opportunities because all we've been able to do is have that really quick phone call, find out what their needs are and then try to convert them to a customer and uh, what I'm really excited about uh, once we start to get some uh, more capacity into the business is that I will start to remove myself from all those training sessions and we'll start to transition me into more of the business development side of things where it gives me more of that opportunity that when our team is building all these leads all these inbound leads into the organization I'll be in a position that I can quickly follow up with them I'll be able to quickly be able to go out meet with them build that relationship with them and uh, hopefully we'll convert more business because of that. So uh, I guess that's kind of where we hope things are going to go and, and we're pretty confident that's the direction it will go. That's awesome. Travis, Ricky, thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks, Appreciate it. Really do.